This year we're celebrating the 125th anniversary of the Economic Journal, one of the oldest economic journals in the world. What we really wanted to do with this anniversary issue was to celebrate the breadth and depth of topics that had been covered in the journal and the relevance they had to today's policy debate. Looms and Sugden's paper was very seminal because it marked a departure in economics from thinking of consumers as purely rational to thinking of them as more psychological beings that may take decisions based on a larger set of issues than purely monetary incentives. We're here with Professor Robert Sugden, and we're going to talk about his seminal paper on regret theory with his co-author, Graham Loom. So what is regret theory? What regret theory does is it takes account of the comparisons between what you actually have and what you might have had. So in the case of the, um, the horse race, if you don't bet on the race, if the horse wins, Although you've only got your, you've still got your existing wealth, you've got the regret of thinking, oh, well, if I'd bet, I would, be, I would have won some more money. And regret theory is trying to include these feelings of comparisons between what you actually have experienced and what you might have experienced and trying to incorporate those into a rational choice theory. Was there a lot of resistance to your theory at the time? Or did people say, ah, oh, this answers all these important questions we couldn't answer before? We were, in some sense, trading on uh, Kahneman Tversky who just produced this prospect theory uh, and so I think it was actually quite a quite a topical issue at the time when we gave papers to a kind of ordinary you know conventional um, audience in, a, in an economics department you get a lot of people think well, why are you doing this what, what's what's the point but actually in terms of the the profession there was a there were people were actually quite excited in it. So actually, it was relative, by modern standards, it was actually quite easy to get our papers published then. <laughs> you mentioned prospect theory. How does regret theory differ from prospect theory? What prospect theory does, it introduces a difference between gains and losses. So it says when the experience of a gain is different from the experience of a loss. And the other thing it does is it has a distortion of probability. So that instead of dealing with the actual probabilities, it, has a sort of subjective equivalent, so very small probabilities get overweighted and large probabilities less than one get underweighted. Have I gained relative to my status quo? Have I lost relative to the status quo? Whereas in regret theory, it's as though the comparisons are between what you have got and what you might have had. There's quite a lot of sort of similarities between the two, but they're, they're different theories. Is the empirical evidence on regret theory compelling? Has it changed over time? We first of all proposed the theory. We were in a sense challenged by Sarah Lichtenstein, who was a, a very famous psychologist who produced some of the evidence of the violations or the contravention of the standard theory. She said to us, we psychologists know that regret isn't the right explanation for this, but you would never know this because you don't run experiments. So we thought, okay, well, we're, gonna, we're gonna start running experiments. So we, we that's my, myself, Graham Looms, and Chris Starmer, who was my PhD student originally, uh, started off a, a sort of systematic program of testing this regret theory. So we were really very, very excited because we got lots and lots of very surprising results from it. I mean, we found that uh, we could, the theory was predicting that people might prefer, you know, X to Y and then prefer Y to Z and then prefer Z to X and everyone thought, oh, they can't possibly do that. And we, we did experiments, we found it. Say there's a 50% chance of winning 10 pounds. And in some versions of some problems, it might come up as there will be 25 chances of winning 10 pounds, and another 25 chances of winning 10 pounds. Why would someone think that uh, 50 chances of winning 10 pounds is any different from 25 chances of winning 10 pounds plus 25 chances of winning 10 pounds? But when we thought about it, it was clear that that was a possible explanation for quite a lot of what we'd found. And so we thought, well, we'd better run some experiments to test it, and we did run experiments. And unfortunately for us, quite a lot of what we'd originally were really excited about turned out to be caused by yet another phenomenon that was a you know, no one had previously expected. I think one of your critics says, um, taking any emotion as rational just because it exists is too lenient. Is there a way to sort between rational feelings that, that should propel our behavior in a certain way and irrational things, that, you know, these little peculiarities that we have? I don't really understand why economics has got so um, hung up on the concept of rationality. Economics took up this calculus-style mathematics, so they went on to 
modeling the individual as a rational agent, using calculus because they could you know, use a nice maximizing models. And that became the mainstream view of doing economics. The behavior that regret theory models, I can't see any reason why anyone could criticize it irrational. On the other hand, I can't really see also why anyone should be particularly bothered about wanting to, what's the, What's the point? And particularly, it feels too much like... And it's also paternalistic, and it sort of implies exactly. you should change your behavior in some way that you exactly. might, not, yeah, exactly. might make you unhappy. You might regret doing it. Well, that's exactly that's right. So I don't, think, I don't think we really need to concept of rationality. If you were to give advice to graduate students who are looking for a place to work, would you tell them to go into this particular area? Are there still really important unresolved questions? The link between the economics and the psychology is still actually not very well developed. And we, we were, I mean, I would say one of the contributions of regret theory was an attempt to try to bring psychology into economics. So where is this whole field headed in the future? Do you have any hopes at all that some grander theory will subsume a lot of these independent theories, or is it going to just each go its own way? Well, that's a very interesting question, because again, Graham Looms and I disagree about it. Graham Looms, was, he was uh, giving this, this he was rounding up our session today, and he was saying, we all know now that there are lots and lots and lots of psychological effects, and uh, regret is one of them, uh, loss aversion is another, and the big question then is, what do you do with it? The way that things have changed over the last 20, 30 years is from being a unified view of rational choice, everyone agrees what rational, rational choice is, and there's a single theory, um, it's developing a kind of lots of different moral models and people just use the model that you know, works, works best. Graham's saying, well, I think with reasons, well, actually, it's a bit odd if you already know that all these effects are work, why don't you have a grand model? So some people who Graham is one are looking for the, the grand model. Some people who I'm one, I, I think I like sort of simple, I believe in simple models. So I think, I think the way to go is to have a, a, a large array of simple models and to be kind of not take any of them too seriously and be a bit Catholic about them, really. Yeah, the model you need depends upon the question you're asking. Exactly. And, and right. you just pick the model. And if you don't have a grand theory, that's really your only choice. Well, in a certain sense, you could say that the, the, we, have, we had a grand theory yeah, from about <laughs> 1870 to, well, it was 1990, 2000. Uh, everybody, everyone bought into that. And um, the question is, do we want to have a grander and grander theory, or do we want to yeah. give up on grand theory? Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being here. This was a lot of fun. Yes, you said. Enjoy it.